What's up everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In this video we will be learning how to create a sliding navigation. Like we can see here from the right side, if I click on this navigation, it will pop up from the right side and if I uh, click on it again, it will close and slide back. Uh, it's also responsive so it will fit all screen sizes. Uh, I didn't adjust the text size but it fits all screen sizes as well and we can close it from here. All right, it's very simple, but it's important to know how it's built correctly in the editor in order to achieve this. So let's dive in. All right, so we've got the canvas open over here. We've got a pretty simple section uh, with just two columns, uh, one for my transparent video from the right side and one for my stack uh, with some text on the left side. Uh, it doesn't even have a uh, background color because my page has background color uh, black and we're going to be adding our uh, navigation on the right. All right, so I'm going to start by dragging a container, simple container from the add panel to our canvas and changing the color, the background actually color to white. There we go. Um, we want to dock this to the top with zero pixels. We need it touching the edge in order to, uh, to uh, convert this container to pinned position. All right, otherwise this will be disabled. So the container needs to touch uh, the top edge. Right now we're changing this to pin position because we want the, the navigation container to follow us throughout all the website and not only for this section. So once it's pinned, uh, we need to set uh, pin to page. All right, now uh, it will be pinned to our page and we change the docking. We actually need to keep the left docking and the right docking, dock it to both sides and to the top with zero uh, margins from the left and zero margins from the right. There we go. Now we also want to make this uh, fill all our screen height. So we're gonna put 100, 100 uh, VH for the height. We can remove the minimum height. We don't actually need this. We want this to cover uh, all our screen. And in this container, we will also apply a grid of two columns. And the left column is going to be our uh, button that will stick out and will be visible on the page. So we will set this uh, left column to percent and this will be 5%. Okay. This depends on how big you want uh, this button to stick out. I want this 5%. So uh, with a quick calculation, I'll, our whole container is 100%. This button will be 5%. So the rest of the column, the, the right column is uh, gonna be 95%. Remember this number, we will use it uh, very well. So right now we can uh, actually paste our uh, menu items. Uh, it's a simple stack that I created with three buttons. Uh, the three buttons have no background, so it's uh, so it's just uh, with zero opacity, and the big font size just to like uh, stand out over there. And we want these items, uh, this stack actually, to fill in the whole column. So let's uh, make it a hundred percent width. There we go, but let's center this. So let's reset the margins. All right, very well. Now we want to add our button. Uh, now it's not gonna be a button, it just needs to be something clickable. Uh, so we can use a container in this case. Uh, and we will set the container to our um, left column. All right, once I grab it like this, I can drag it over here and I can simply stretch it on this column. I can uh, remove the background or keep the background white. It doesn't really matter. Let's just keep it white. And we can add another uh, shape over here. Let's add some, uh, some menu. Let's, let's uh, take this, for example, the two lines. There we go. Uh, let's paste them inside. So I just uh, used uh, Command X to cut the, the element because it was placed under our container. And I'm gonna paste it over here. I'm gonna shrink this and rotate it 
uh, 90 degrees to be vertical. Let's make this a little smaller, maybe like 50%. There we go. And we can align this to the middle. Okay, so this is our uh, clickable button, per se. And uh, there we go, we have the container. Now let's select the, the main container over here and undock it from the left. Let's keep it 100% width and let's add some negative margins to the right or any side that you want the container to slide from. But remember, if you're doing this from your left side, so this uh, button needs to be on your right side. All right, so adding negative margins to the right. Uh, remember we said that this is going to stick out and it's only 5%, so the rest is 95%. We're going to use this negative 95% in the margins over here. So if I click enter, uh, everything will disappear to the right. Only this part will be sticking out. Now let's add some names. Uh, let's set the IDs actually of these elements so we can manipulate it uh, using some Velo. So I'm going to open the Velo IDE, change uh, the main container to uh, nav, open, sorry, I'm, uh, only nav, and the, the button will be nav open. All right, I already have my IDs here. You can name it whatever, but you will need to change it in the code as well. All right, so... Uh, this is ready. Let's see how it looks on a uh, tablet. So it looks good on the breakpoints. Uh, I didn't touch any design. You can adjust it, but I'm just going to leave it as is because it scales down uh, the way I want it to scale down. It looks good. And because it's fluid, because it's percentage, uh, it's going to stay scale down uh, by default. Great. So let's uh, go to our Velo code. Let's dive in and understand what, what we have here. So we first imported the Wix animation because we want to animate this uh, sliding out. And we also uh, need to import Wix window to calculate our window size in order for this to be responsive. If we don't calculate the window size, then we can slide our uh, navigation only by pixels. And pixels, as we know, is an absolute unit, so it's not going to be responsive. It's going to overflow or or hide the, the menu items. It, we need to, to always fit the screen width, so we need to use uh, the Wix window API. Um, right here, I initially set two uh, variables, nav timeline for our timeline over here, and the screen size interval. The interval basically uh, helps us keep this menu uh, when we scale the screen size down. It's not a common use case, but uh, when people open your menu, it needs to always fill in and center in, on your website. So if you click and open your menu and you scale your uh, window down, we want this to be to remain centered and not like overflow. So this will help us do so. Okay, uh, I've added a function which is on click and let's see what happens on click. If the container uh, is not open, so there's a, there's a boolean here saying that it's uh, initially false, it's not open. So the first function over here is uh, screen size. We call this function uh, from here below. This function calculates our screen size and uh, adds the uh, Wix animation, the, the timeline basically of sliding out our menu from the right uh, to our timeline that we saved above. So uh, we've put the nav ID, which is the, the big container, and we tell it to slide to the left on the X axis. Uh, the amount of the screen size uh, multiplied by 95%. Once again, we have this number. Uh, it comes from the the margins that we had. So if it's negative 95%, we also need the same amount over here. Okay, so it's 0 0.95, which is 95%. Uh, 
uh, and you can uh, change the duration or the easing I personally like it like this and uh, we're also setting the interval to to keep our uh, menu centered on the screen when we resize the screen okay so that's uh, what the interval is for and on the other hand we have uh, else if the container is open and I'm clicking uh, once again on the nav open which is uh, this button that we created uh, then clear the interval we don't need it anymore we don't need to center our container because it's gonna hide anyway and add a new animation to our variable uh, which will slide our uh, nav, nav container back to its original X point on the X axis which is zero that's how we reset and tell him go back and back is where you initially set it here in the editor and we set it to hide like just like this okay so that's resetting uh, the timeline and that's it basically uh, you can uh, play around with uh, with the duration with the easing if you're changing changing the container size uh, don't forget to change the negative margins and also uh, over here in the velo code the the percentage according to the margins and that's it happy building